We don't. I, <laughs> apparently, enough, apparently, Lee Clark likes the, the song. Humpty dance. He's in there dancing. It provides uh, variety. It does and provide background atmosphere. Right. But of course, you don't need. You are atmosphere. <laughs> I don't need it, bro. I mean, you have your own atmosphere. I am. I am an atmosphere. Have you seen how big I am? I'm the entire atmosphere. <laughs> I got my own gravitational pull. <laughs> anyway, speaking of gravitational pulls, did you see? Did you see what the sheriff from uh, Arizona did? Can, you know what? For this, you know what? I, I need some porn music. Can you give me some porn music? Um. Yeah. The impossible just takes a little longer. At- oh hey. yeah. Oh yeah, baby girl. So did you hear? Did you hear what the, the sheriff from Arizona did? I, I did, but I think I, you want to tell us. Well, what happened? See, what happened was he was uh, in Arizona, right? Mm-hmm. And she was in Sheriff, Arizona. She was too. Miss mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Sarah Palin herself. Yeah. So Sarah Palin was in um, Arizona, and she's visiting. She's giving campaign speeches and, and doing her thing. And then the sheriff tweets. Do you have the tweet? Where's the tweet? I got the tweet right Come here. Come on, producer. I'm giving you some saucer, for goodness sakes. At least you can have this stuff ready. Let's go. Here it is. Here we go. Mm, the What's the tweet? Says, What's the tweet? I just got done welcoming Sarah Palin to our county. Had a nice chat and gave her a pair of pink underwear. Pink underwear. Oh yeah. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> How, how do you tweet that about a former vice vice president candidate? I gave her pink underwear. Now, I know from Arizona that this is the same sheriff that has the tent cities, uh, pres, uh, prisons. Right. And everyone has to wear pink underwear, which is just funny in itself. I, yeah. But to give her pink underwear and then tweet it, I mean... I mean, the first action may be inappropriate. I don't know. I think it's kind of sexy. The second action, though, actually to put it out do you there. Think, do you think? Do you think like he thought he was a stud, but like, here, you know where this came from? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder so, if they said anything or what were they? they were just regular. I, how does that conversation go? Here's here's my pink boxers. I just or wanted underwear. to give you a little something to remember me by. Hey Sarah, here's some pink underwear. Now. It, we don't have any information on what kind of underwear they wore. Could were they wear thong? Was were they it briefs? Panties, panties? Were they briefs? briefs? Boxer briefs? What are they, were they? Tea bags? Oh, mm, yeah. But, but, but what if they? What if they're not Sarah Palin size? What if they're the sheriff size? Oh, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> you could fit like three or four of them. You could you could put like three or four um, Sarah uh, Palin's in those, in those. Yeah, in those, in those tea bags. I wonder if he gives them to everybody. <laughs> That's like the big giveaway of Arizona. Yeah. We're giving away a Chico's gift certificate. The sheriff of Arizona gives away pink, pink underwear. underwear. I now, like it. And it, is it just to women? Is it to dudes? I mean, I don't know. You know what else? Why? Why we got the 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 porn music playing in the background? Oh. Let me ask you something. If you get a phone call at two o'clock in the morning, okay? Right. What do you expect that phone call is going to be? Um, probably one of any number of horrible things. Could be a death. Mm-hmm. Could be your kids are in jail. Mm-hmm. A friend asks you to help him bury a body somewhere. <laughs> I, I love those phone calls. I mean, it, it. nothing good happens at 2 o'clock in the morning on the telephone. Nothing. What? Well, it's not always bad. It could be good. Okay. I mean, if you want to get, you know... If you're single and oh, I guess and you could get that call at two o'clock in the morning. Hey, baby, what you doing? Right? With Can I pink, come over? With your pink undies. But no, not in Nevada. Apparently, at two o'clock in the morning, they have phone calls about uh, who are you going to vote for. <laughs> you mean those calls that just kind of come out? <laughs> those of- robo calls that everybody's getting right now. Hello, voter. <laughs> Hello, voter. <laughs> are you more likely to vote Republican or Democrat or Independent or not at all? At 2 o'clock in the morning. That's, yeah. I would be really excited to get that telephone call at 2 in the morning. I mean, some, what it, you know, most family people are probably like ready to throw something through the, throw the phone out the window. But that single guy is probably like, oh my goodness, oh. someone actually called. Oh. <laughs> oh, let me run it, run it to get to the phone and then he's all disappointed. So basically nobody's happy about a phone call at 2 o'clock in the morning. No, not after that content comes out. No. What? Who? Who's Who? calling me? What? 
Are you serious? Well, yeah. I guess you could really say that they're probably doing their homework in the fact that they know that people are generally home at two in the morning. <laughs> they want to reach there. You know, I can. I know I can reach voters if if. Uh, Whoa! Ooh, I just hit the microphone. Don't That's what you get for out. eating too much uh, salsa. Um, I know I can reach voters of, of Nevada if I just call at two o'clock in the morning because you know they're gonna be home. They're not at work. It's during a weekday, and so they're not at work. You know they're probably not partying because they have to work the next day. So at two o'clock in the morning, you know you're gonna reach them. It was, it was it a Wednesday. It's a brilliant. Yeah. Well, it was during during the weekday. week. Okay. And if not, then you know it well, is because I said it was. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. You know you, you got to know. You're going to get some response. Someone's going to pick up the phone. Because you, you know when the phone rings at 2 o'clock in the morning, you, you pick it up. So, today, if you haven't noticed, is fun day here on the Fritz Show. Not Wednesday. Not No, not Wednesday. Today is fun day. Fun day. We're giving away Chico's gift certificates or a liberal book, if, you, if you'd like. All for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Bought them all for a dollar. But anyway. Uh, hey, Lee Clark. Mr. Lee Clark. In studio. Yes, sir. There's like a crowd in there. Yes. It's like a party. This is, it's like a party. It's like a salsa these party. These are my people. These, these are your, your peeps? Yeah, if you want to talk to me, you've got to talk to my people, and they have people. Wow. Hey, do me so a favor. It's can you like play complicated. Can you play clip two for me? Certainly. Um, clip two. Yeah. Heartless. Coming up. Good evening. I'm Chris Matthews down in Washington. Leading off tonight, nerves on edge. Stop it. How can people be so... Now, this is... Uh, the, to get serious for a moment, MSNBC, which is the, the propaganda network here in the United States, there's no doubt about it. No one can actually watch MSNBC without each or either laughing their head off or blowing a blood vessel. <laughs> so here's Chris Matthews. He starts the show the other night with this. Okay, you can play it now. Okay, coming up. Good evening, I'm Chris Matthews down in Washington. Leading off tonight, nerves on edge. How can people be so heartless? The American independent voters on a tear. A new political battleground state poll shows independent voters inclined to be even nastier to the Democrats next Tuesday. When the Democrats can stop the surge among independents will determine whether they either cut their losses next Tuesday or drown in a Republican tsunami. We'll weigh the odds on that. Could you imagine? Wow. Could you imagine Bill O'Reilly or Glenn Beck talking about a Democrat tsunami? How many people would come out of the woodwork going, how could you compare an election to a tsunami? You sick SOBs! You're heartless. Heartless, I tell you. And the vote, the American people who are upset and and, and go and vote the people they don't like out, which is... I thought that's how the system worked. That's exactly. That's the system. Hmm. You vote the people you don't like out. Now, all of a sudden, you're heartless for, for doing things by the system. Well, according to Chris Matthews. And I, 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 heartless. Well, and that kind of goes into uh, what Bill said the other day. What did Bill say the well, other day? Bill was talking about uh, don't vote angry. Don't vote angry. I feel your pain. I feel it. But don't vote angry. Who, yeah. was, he, who was he talking he to? He was talking to, uh, uh, let's see, a thousand Democrats in Pennsylvania, and he was talking about whenever you make an important decision, when you're mad, there's an 80% chance you'll make the wrong decision. And if that's the case, my whole life has been made so it's kind of like bad decisions. So it's basically kind of like that I feel your pain, except it's, it's complete opposite. Exactly. I don't feel your pain. No. I really don't. There's nothing to feel. You just need to give Barack Obama a, a little bit more time. I'm yeah, telling it's only, you. It's only been two years. Give him a little more. It's been two years, and unemployment's at 10%, even though he said it wasn't going to go over eight and a half. We spent almost we spent a trillion almost a trillion dollars since he's been in office on on a stimulus program <laughs> and I like stimulants but it didn't work and so <laughs> I feel I, I feel your pain but I really don't well I, you know, oh by the way if you're in Arkansas go to my uh, go to my presidential library and get a massage <laughs> I'm just saying well I, you know every everybody has uh, these emotions about uh, about. The candidates and, and about the issues, but to say something, <laughs> don't don't vote angry. Vote happy when you're when you're happy. Vote then. Don't vote when you're mad. Then tell that to the people that keep losing their jobs, right? And, and, and their house, their job. And tell that to the people who can't find a job mm-hmm. for the simple reason that uh, 
corporations are holding on to their money because they don't know what tax code they're going to have to abide by next year. Right. I mean, there's, what, two, three trillion dollars sitting on the sideline because no one knows what kind of taxes are coming next year. So everybody's holding on to their money. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. unbelievable. It's madness. Madness, I tell you. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, oh, Humpty Dumpty again. I love it. I love that. When we get back, we're going to talk about a little bit about Robert Gibbs. I love it. The White House gesture right here on The Fridge Show. We'll be back right after this.